Hi everybody, and welcome back to the College Admissions Snapshot, case study number four. Today we're talking all about Mia. Mia just finished her junior year in high school, and her goal is to be a mechanical engineering major at MIT. That's her dream school, and she plans on applying there early. Now she's from California, so Caltech would be awesome as well, but she has her heart and her mind set on MIT. And it's my job in the next few minutes to assess Mia's body of work, to determine whether I think Mia will get accepted to MIT or denied. Now, as we do in all of our case studies, we always start above what I call the initial screen by looking at the big three, the objective academic metrics. In other words, the numbers. How did Mia do with the numbers? Will she get through this screen for MIT to even give her the time of day? Well, let's start with number one, GPA, 4.4. Awesome, she's through. What about SAT? 1520. She got a perfect on the math. She got a 720 on the verbal. Not too shabby. So far, so good. What about SAT subject tests? Well, she took them in very technical subjects, math 2 and physics. She got an 800 or perfect on math 2 and a 790 on physics. Almost perfect. Now, I also highlighted a couple of exam grades that she got on some AP exams. Now, she took a bunch more, but I put these two up here because these are some of the hardest AP exams. She got a five on AP Calculus BC and a four on one of the toughest ones, AP Physics C. So she's bringing the heat when it comes to standardized test scores. And of course, you can imagine the rigor of her coursework was extremely advanced. She almost maxed out at her, her high school every single advanced class or AP class that she could have with a few exceptions. So right now, as you set back, is she gonna get through that in initial screen? Do those scores justify MIT giving her additional looks? Of course, yes, she smoked it. Let's go to extracurricular activities. What did Mia do outside the classroom? Well, she kicks it off with a four week internship at Siemens, a big technology and engineering conglomerate, international, very prestigious internship. She earned that and had a great time there. Pretty good so far. Robotics Club, president, three years, showing leadership, so showing demonstrated interest in engineering. Awesome. How about the United States Naval Academy STEM camp, science, technology, engineering, and math camp. She applied for that after ninth grade and got it. Very hard to get. Went to the Naval Academy for a week and learned all kinds of stuff. She has an Instagram account with over 11,000 followers, all about engineering. She started as a ninth grader, fantastic. She's a contributing writer to one of the most famous technology blogs around called Tech Republic. She's been doing that for over two years, contributing as a student to this worldwide blog. We move on to two different types of part-time jobs. She worked in what's called a fab lab, the fabrication lab, which is a big warehouse that has all kinds of computers and 3D printers and CAD design software. And she got paid to walk around and help younger students figure out how to use all this equipment. She was also at a local computer store, a drone repair technician. Sound pretty good, right? Getting paid in her area of interest. She also did a TED Ed talk on the future of drones delivering packages to homes. Once again, public speaking, getting out, showing subject matter expertise. She also did what we call shadow sessions. She wasn't really quite sure up until a sophomore year what type of engineer she wanted to be. So we set her up to have individual one day shadow sessions with different types of engineers, a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer, a software engineer, a materials engineer, and she got to taste and experiment with one day at a time. And through that experience, she figured out that mechanical engineering was what she, was what she really wanted to do. She also dug so deeply into Khan Academy and did so many modules in engineering and math that they had her become an ambassador and tutor kids through Khan Academy as a Khan Academy ambassador. So as we step back, this is very, very impressive. Not only it is impressive individually, but what I like is the variety and the diversity of things that she did. She did a couple of paid camps. She won an internship. She got selected for the United States Naval Academy STEM camp, which is difficult to do, very competitive. She did work. She did public speaking. She shows that she has a social side by having an Instagram profile. She shows that she understands how to connect with adults and sit with adults and glean information from them to make decisions about what she might want to do in her future. 
This is all not only individually great stuff, but it, it really gives a great story about a variety of things all moving in the direction of technology and engineering and math, which is exactly what MIT is looking for. Let's move down to awards. You won't be surprised that she did very well in these categories. She graduated number two in her class. I'm not sure who number one is, but I'd like to get to know him or her. Number two, she was awarded a Davidson Fellows Award, which is given across the country in eight discrete categories. She won for the category of engineering. Super impressive. She also won the Google Science Fair, which is an international competition, and they take the handful of winners to the Galapagos Islands to study. How great is that? She also was a state AP Scholar Award, which means once you take a certain number of AP tests and you get the, one of the highest averages of your AP exam scores in the state, you can get this AP State Scholar Award. California, super, super competitive. That didn't scare Mia. She got that as well. And of course, she was also a National Merit Scholarship finalist, which ironically, of all these things, that's probably the least impressive. Let's move down to letters of recommendation. Surely these are going to be impressive because she's so enthusiastic and so engaged in the school and the campus and the community. She's known Mr. Carl, her guidance counselor, since ninth grade. Because in Preplow Academy, we really stress getting to know that guidance counselor over the course of three and four years. She also got great recommendations from two teachers in very core subjects that MIT cares about, such as multivariate calculus and multivariable calculus and physics. Those are the types of recommendations for a technical school that you're going to want to nail. Now, has she demonstrated any interest in MIT? Well, somebody like Mia is not going to leave any stone unturned. So when Preble Academy suggested to her that she reach out to her dream school and look in the department that she wants to do and try to establish a relationship with someone, guess what she did? She went to MIT.edu and went to the engineering department and then mechanical engineering. And guess who she found? She found Professor Del Vecchio, another female who is a professor of mechanical engineering at MIT. And she established a relationship with her and actually started doing a little bit of work and a little bit of research for her. So now she's got an 18 month relationship with a professor at MIT in the major that she wants to go into. Now that is demonstrated interest. Thank you for taking our advice, Mia. She's also done the typical things like gone on a tour. She's met with a school rep when they visited her high school. And of course, she's very active on social media. So she's getting the feed and understanding everything that MIT is putting out to understand the personality of the school. And in terms of the essay, she's working on it right now and it is really shaping up. She's writing an essay about how she pulled her old bike that she rode when she was eight years old and she dusted it off and got all the rust off and took it all apart and put it back together and included an electric bike converter kit to try to turn her youth bike into an efficient electric bike. But the punchline is it turned out to be a complete disaster and didn't work. And that's what the essay is all about. Now, in terms of hooks, Mia may have a little bit of an edge since she's a female going into a very male dominated field, science, technology, engineering. So from MIT's perspective, they love to get females who are this impressive, who want to go down that track. And in the end, I don't think you're going to be surprised that I'm going to give Mia a big thumbs up. I believe Mia will get into MIT. Look at her body of work. She's got great numbers. She's easily going to pass through the screen. She's got unbelievable extracurriculars that are not only great individually and show great variety, but they weave a story about what she cares about, what she's inspired by, what she values. That's what the admissions officers are looking for. She's done great stuff, not only in her school and her community, but on the national stage and the international stage. Mia can compete. She's got unbelievable letters of recommendation from the topics and the subjects that she's going to be pursuing in college from a physics teacher, from a multivariable calculus teacher, exactly what they want to see. She's shown great demonstrated interest, not only in the easy stuff, but she's connected with a professor and a major that she wants to pursue. And of course, her essay really brings out what she cares about by the school now knows that she'll get her hands dirty. She's going to take things apart, put them back together. She knows how to use tools. She's manually literate. That's exactly what engineers need to be. And she has not left any doubt in anyone's mind. And my last point is this, this body of work does not happen overnight. Mia does not wake up in the middle of 11th grade like most other juniors and say, hmm, maybe I should start thinking about college now. 
What shall I do? That's not what happens with people like Mia. Mia and her family are smart enough and confident enough to start this planning process and awareness process early, the end of eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, start moving her through the process so that she can execute on some of these ideas. That's exactly what Prepwell Academy does. That's why I'm such a proponent of early, 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 start in ninth grade, start in 10th grade, so they understand what shadow sessions are, so they understand why there should be a variety of extracurriculars. They understand what types of classes to take and which types of classes really mean things. So they understand what it might mean to demonstrate interest by reaching out to a professor. These things don't materialize. Normally, these things are pre-planned. It's all about a strategy. So if you know somebody who's in eighth or ninth or 10th grade, and you think they might have the capacity to strike like Mia did, I'll send you the PDF. Email me, DM me, whatever you want to do. I'll send this to you so you can let your son, your daughter, or if it's you and you're the student, start thinking about these things and plan for the future. Or join Preppel Academy and we'll do it for you. Good luck and see you next time.